Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and this morning I'm looking at a book from Oxford University Press. It's called Intellectual Property in Government Contracts. It's got a subtitle, Protecting and Enforcing IP at the State and Federal Level. It's now in a second edition, and it's been written by four people, James G. McEwen, David S. Block, Richard M. Gray, and John T. Lucas. And yes, you've guessed it, it's very much an American-style book. The title we've given it is Protecting IP Rights Stateside with Respect to Government Contracts. And what we say in this book is the following. Fundamentally, it's innovation which keeps markets and economies moving. Britain and America, especially America, are the prime examples of that. And as the four expert authors of this insightful book, now in a second edition, point out, quote, cutting-edge technology is a driving force behind America's sustained economic growth despite cyclical or systemic fluctuations in that nation's economic health, uh, we would venture to add. And obviously there is always going to be a rider. Enter the almost symbiotic relationship between the public and private sectors in the US, discussed in detail in this book on IP rights. From 2006 onwards, for example, the US government was, and no doubt still is the world's largest consumer of goods and services, the aggregate spending of uh, 50 states uh, not far behind. Um, If one could simplify uh, this ongoing private sector, um, public sector relationship, it would be to point out that the US government has a continuing need for the research, the technologies and the products and services initiated and produced by the private sector. And the authors cite the Department of Defence, the Department of Energy and NASA as examples of research-intensive government agencies which, in their words, have started to rely on the private sector to provide the latest and greatest available uh, technologies. All this, of course, impacts on procurement and on government contracts uh, in particular. And the book, as the publishers have put it, has embarked on a comprehensive appraisal of the intellectual property implications of state and federal procurement programs in the US. And that really is the basis of the book. It's a book, uh, is, the book is of course American, but the issues and problems it raises in these um, areas of protecting and, for- and enforcing clients' intellectual property rights are applicable globally. We welcome the book. This is what it looks like, um, the spine, and there are pictures of the guys on the back. Um, the book's got an interesting thing, a little flap in the side there, and also a little flap in the side there. You've got the standard, very detailed index, which is useful. What you do have is a lot of footnotes, which are extremely helpful, I think. There is no paragraphing as such. What you do have, you have a certain amount of limited, but there's quite a lot of uh, the use of letters A, B and C and so forth, rather than uh, actual paragraph numbering as such. Uh, I think it's an excellent book. I'd like to thank OUP and the authors for producing it. Uh, Now in a second edition, so it's been very popular uh, when it first came out. Good luck, and thank you very much for producing it. Bye-bye.